It is Thursday, April 21st, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday puzzle, so we'll have some kind of complex theme today. Um, Something unusual or challenging, difficult to parse, we'll have to see. And this edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to you by a new benefactor. So welcome and thanks to Skylar, new benefactor, joining um, existing benefactor Kathleen Quinn, as well as, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to all four of them, the benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks and get that Let's Check the Crosses um, Daily Solve official mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And um, if you back at any level, you get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on that channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And you also get the extra channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server. But of course, the rest of the Daily Solve Discord chat server where the community congregates is free for anybody to join. And there's a link to join that in the description field underneath the video as well. Um, and I think that's, oh, well, I should also just generally thank everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any tier. I do very much appreciate that. So thank you to everybody who's done so. And thanks to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. Um, I appreciate that as well. And it's nice to see that number tick up. So let's move on to today's puzzle. As I say, it is a Thursday puzzle. So some kind of complex theme, perhaps. And it was uh, constructed by Max Chen Loring, who has constructed a small handful of puzzles for the New York Times, a few few of them. And it was con- it was edited, I'm sorry, as always, by Will Shorts. So um, let's go. Now, I think last Thursday, there was a rebus in the puzzle. And a rebus is, uh, I'm saying this now, because even though I don't know whether there will be a rebus in today's puzzle, because after that, somebody said, how do you know when this sort of thing is going to happen? And um, the answer is you just have to figure it out by context. So a rebus, just to remind you, because it may pop up in today's puzzle, it's a Thursday puzzle. So this is the day we're most likely to see it. Um, That's when you can put uh, several letters in a single cell. So if you put in cell, well, that's not a great example, but let's say you put in cell with one L, like animation cell, you could then spell accelerate if well, it's not going to fit in any, any of these here, but if you put AC, then you could have CEL. And if you had enough remaining cells here, you could spell out the rest of Accelerate or something like that. Um, and how do you know that's going to happen? Uh, you don't. You just have to. Eventually, usually the way I realize a rebus is coming is because there just isn't any other way to make some answers work. And if it's a Thursday, that's it's an extra an extra clue. But anyway, who knows? That may or may not happen today. I just decided to address that because it was, I think there was a comment on the previous Thursday's puzzle. So let's keep going. Rounds out as an event. I'm actually not sure what that is asking for, to round out as an event. Sound of a cake hitting the floor, (laughs) frosting first. Uh, Plop or, I'm not, uh, it'll be something like that. What about this? Ukrainian for one. Slav, and a, oh, a neighbor of you of Ukrainian, um, and the sound of a cake hitting the floor, floor frosting first. So the S feels appropriate here. Splat, splat. I think that's the word I was looking for. Oh, so a neighbor of Ukrainian could be a pole. There we go. That looks right. And a hideout could be a lair, maybe. Off roaders for short could be ATVs for all terrain vehicles. And group established by 1992's Maastricht Treaty. Uh, the EU. Um, so the Maastricht Treaty uh, was signed by member states of the European Economic Community. Uh, and then at that point, it became the European Union essentially in its present form. Um, Eurozone had not yet been implemented. Uh, Wins the Hunger Games, e.g. Stays alive, I guess? Yeah. Seems plausible. I've actually never seen or read the Hunger Games, but I'm pretty confident that's the point of it, is to stay alive. Uh, Surrenders. Oh. 
Maybe not. Uh, that's interesting. Because surrenders... I would have expected to end with an S as well. What would fit in three letters for surrenders? I mean, I would think it would be something like seeds or something like that, but... What about this? This looks like a verse. Oh, so we have a dash here. So this is probably... Uh, well, it's, 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 I would say almost certainly it is thematic. This is related to our theme. So we don't know what goes here because we'll have to determine what's going on at, with the theme in order to determine what goes in these dashed cells. There isn't really any way to know until then. Only joking to a texture. JK? What would fit in four letters with that? And there might be something weird going on here. What about, what about this U? Online handle, a user name? User ID could be. Um, oh, and then down is another dash. Let's check the crosses on user ID, see if that works. Acoustic measure. Oh, is it sewn or something like that? I'm not very certain about this. Main university town. I think Ocala. It's one of those things I mainly know from crosswords. Uh, that might not be right. No, that's Florida. Ocala, Florida. What is the one in Maine? <laughs> Some of these towns I just know from crosswords and I get them mixed up. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I should probably delete this. Let's look elsewhere. What about this? Gush over as to gain favor. Fawn over, maybe? You could be a sycophant fawning over somebody. Bottom, oh, a bottom feeder in the ocean, for instance, or metaphorically used to describe maybe somebody who fawns over, uh, over people with power car whose logo features a coiled green serpent. Um, oh, Alfa Romeo. There we go. Oops. Alfa Romeo. And with full knowledge. Um, wide eyed or something. No, I was thinking with eyes wide open, but we, we're not going to have with in the answer because we already have with in the clue. We're not going to repeat it. So make sure you note that. Designer Saab. Um, Ilia or Ilio. Puccini aria popularized by Pavarotti. In three letters? Um, young Newt's Efts, maybe? Well, not maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm certain that's the case. I don't know why I said maybe. Um, with full knowledge, or witting, wittingly, as opposed to unwittingly. There we go. That's what it is. Very rarely say wittingly. Um, one of those words that mainly is unwittingly, sort of like overwhelmed and whelmed. I mean, you can say whelmed, but but it's largely, largely we don't. Okay, so, uh-oh. Well, <laughs> my two guesses here, Elio or Elia, are not are neither confirmed nor denied by uh by this oh, these aren't going to help um puccini aria popularized by pavarotti uh, well this is presumably just something i wait a second Aha. Yes. Okay. I see what's going on. Boy, I, ah, it's frustrating that I explained my, sorry, my phone is going nuts. I just want to make sure nothing important is happening. Um, I can't tell. Uh, all right. I, it's a shame I explained rebuses, but I guess in a way it's good that I did because, because I think something's going on in this puzzle. It is sort of like a rebus, but not quite. I'm going to not fill it in just yet, actually. I want to see if I can wait to find something that's more straightforward. Um, Coleridge's The Blank Harp. I don't know. Maybe this will be familiar when I see it, but I'm not sure offhand. Oh, here's the... Oh, wait. Oh, I see. Sorry. So 30 down is our revealer. Is our revealer. With, 30, with 41 across, a celestial event or a hint to four squares in this puzzle. Okay, well, I know what this is now. So now, now I feel as though I need to just type it in. So I think 
this is a solar eclipse. If I didn't put this in, I would just be, be, be strangely withholding at this point, which would get odd. I was going to be a bit withholding to try and find a better way to explain how the, the break into this puzzle works, but, but I would feel weird just intentionally leaving this blank. Uh, so I think what's going on is, and this confirms it, solar eclipse is the celestial event depicted in this puzzle. So this, the Buccini aria popularized by Pavarotti, it seems very strange to me that it would be in three letters. I would be very surprised if there were a Puccini aria name that is just three, sorry, I just, what is going on with my phone? Um, that is just three letters long. And I think, in fact, this is Nessun Dorma, which you may have heard of, the aria. And so I think what's going on is that some of the black cells in this puzzle are serving as the sun. Well, or rather, I guess they're eclipsed. So um, they've been eclipsed by these black cells here. So the sun is hiding behind this black cell. And if we imagined it was there, almost as though it were there in a rebus. Um, so I, see, I explained what a rebus was, thinking maybe it would apply in this puzzle. It didn't, but it sort of almost does. We have these virtual rebuses, these implicit Rebus is here, Nessun Dorma. And so what did this say exactly? It said a hint to four squares in this puzzle. So my guess is it will be this one. I can't actually click on the black cells themselves. This one, yes, and we have this dash here. So, so we can see with this Dorma, we have the dash. And the dash means, generally speaking, in a themed puzzle, the dash means um, it will be obvious how to, well, maybe not obvious, but you'll see how to fill this based on some element of the theme that, that isn't being explained here. So really this dash, and often what, often what the dash means even more specifically than that is this is just a continuation of another answer. And in this case, it's just a continuation of 13. This is essentially just part of 13 down. It's not even its own 27 down clue. It just continues straight on from 13 down. And we can see that happens here as well. I bet it will happen here, it does and it will happen with 65 down, and it does as well. So these four conspicuously placed black cells are our four suns representing our four solar eclipses, I suppose. So let's see, does that help here? Surrenders. And and this it, it's related to what I was saying about the about figuring out what, where rebuses go, because with this clue, surrenders, I thought, what on earth, how could surrenders possibly fit in three cells. I mean, it would need an S on the end in order to match surrenders as opposed to surrender. And then that doesn't really match with hunt with this Hunger Games because we're, if it's wins the Hunger Games, it's going to be some things alive. And then that S there doesn't really work. And then similarly with Nessun Dorma, it's just not long enough. So so that that's, especially on a Thursday, be on the lookout for that kind of thing. Because you might not know, I, mean, I saw those things, but it didn't necessarily tell me what to put into these cells, but it at least um, it started. It put me. It it started me thinking. Maybe something is going on here. So okay. So if we say stays alive here, um, I'm actually not sure what surrenders is here. So there'd be suns in there. Un. Oh, okay. I'm not actually sure. Sorry. This could be keeps alive, maybe. It probably stays alive. Um, oh, and here we have another one of these, right? So in this one, oh, I didn't even look at this. Maker of Z cars once. So Dotson, which was a um, predecessor to Nissan. So the uh, Dotson Z and then eventually the Nissan Z was a, a kind of crazy sports car that had talking. It had a sort of, it would talk to you and things instead of, you know, say things like door open. It was, I, I knew someone who had one growing up and it was outrageous. Anyway, um, so what was this? Annual pageant winner. Oh, Miss, Miss Universe or yes, M-I-S and then S-U-N and then I-V-E-R-S. So uh, Miss Universe and then only joking to a texter. Oh, is it psych? Oh, I, I can't stand this. So this is, I think this is a, a a sort of modern, I don't know if it's intentional or unintentional misspelling of psych, which would be, which would have been until just the last couple of years, would have been spelled psych, 
as a contraction of sort of psych you out in the sense of psychological, you know, manipulation in a very light way. Um, but it seems to very recently have turned into psych, S-I-K-E, which I have to say almost hurts me to look at. Um, Hoover rival, so Hoover is a, a vacuum cleaner manufacturer and one of their rivals is Orac. So I can put that in. And then, right, of course, this is the continuation of Surrender, but let's check these crosses first. Classic pink cocktail, Cosmo, Cosmopolitan, and Up and About could be a stir. Terrible Twos, um, that's a phase of child rearing. And rounds out as an event, caps an event, I guess. And a plant watcher for short. Oh, plant as in manufacturing plant. So OSHA, which is the um, United States federal agency that oversees uh, workplace safety and that kind of thing. And then, okay, this is stays alive. So surrenders. Oh, says uncle. I see. I'm not surprised I didn't get that immediately. Um, so says with our son, says uncle. Gives up. Like the five of five and ten. Is it just lesser? The lesser number? Is that all this is? Oh, this is Orono main, Orono main, Orono. Um... Yeah, so it does start with an O. I was right about that. Oh, so the, maybe this is sewn acoustic measure. I suppose it is. And what about this? Result of a rift. A sect, you could have a religious sect that arises as the result of a rift on theological grounds, for instance. And then here we have... Re oh, right, this isn't a sun. Sorry, I was thinking this was a sun, but it's not. So what about this? Bruins legend to fans. This will be some... Sports player, I'm not sure. Top shelf could be elite. And what avocados don't do until they're picked? They don't ripen until they're picked. That's interesting. And, oh, the Aeolian harp? Weirdly, that sort of rings a bell now that I see all of the, all of the crosses except for that. But does that work here? Brief second. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. What is that? And then Mexico has 31 of these states, 30, 31 states. Brief. Oh, oh, it is. It is Aeolian. Okay. I see. Brief second is assistant. That's, that's clever. So we have the question mark, meaning there's a bit of pun or wordplay going on here. And that is sort of applying to both brief and second, I suppose. It's primarily referring to second in the sense of your second in command, an assistant. Um, but also brief, meaning abbreviated. So a shortened version of that word. And then here we have to have as a tenant is to rent to somebody and receives an anesthetic, perhaps. Oh, this will be part of the sun. I keep forgetting that. So goes under, goes under, goes is under. Yeah, there we go. So you're administered anesthetic, go unconscious, you go under. And here's another one. Do we have this? Labor labor group for athletes, oh, some kind of union, I bet. Uh, the UN from Sun Union play, Players Union. Yes, there we go. And button on a scale tear. So the the tear button on a scale will will zero it out. So whatever whatever weight is already on the scale will be normalized to zero, and then you weigh anything else put on top. Insurance giant acquired by CVS in 2018 is Aetna. Let's come up in the crossword a couple of times. Un gato grande would be. A tiger, I suppose. Do I need to know that in Spanish? So a big cat. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, it actually probably is tiger spelled this way, would be my guess. And a sea eagle. Ah, yeah, probably. Sea eagle is an ern. Just one of those one of those birds you should know because it shows up in crosswords. And a wine category is reds, I guess. Reds and whites. Incessantly is to no end. This puzzle, I could imagine frustrating people incessantly and frustrating them to no end. Much of Chile is the Andes Mountains. And super sharp could be razor-edged, perhaps. You are in Spanish. Is that eres? And steady looks could be gazes, but let's check the crosses because it could be other things. Ansari of Master of None, Aziz Ansari. is the comedian and actor and writer. And blank land, la la land, I guess this is. And harness could be to yoke, as in oxen, or metaphorically anything else. Thumbs up from me. I like, I suppose. Herb unit is a sprig, a 
sprig verbs. And one of the Eternals in Marvel Comics. Now this I genuinely have no clue. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to know until I get all of the crosses, essentially. Unless it's also the name of some kind of um, myth mythical character, and then I might be able to infer it. Sometimes Marvel characters seem to be named after myth. So we'll see. Bruins legend to fans. No idea. Uh-oh, this could be a tough cross. Not like that. Repellent spray. Could be insect repellent, I'm guessing. Bards before could be air. Before, poetically, before. Air, air long, before long. Fish with a long snout. A gar? Doesn't a gar have a long snout? Does that work here? Catastrophic weather event potentially caused by a meteor crash. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's not gar. What about this? Spider-like. Arachnoid? Yeah, that fits. And yes, of course. Consider it done or no problem. I'm trying to think what other phrases are similar to that. What about this? Oh, the fish with a long snout. The guard does still work there. Go haywire. Act up. A machine goes haywire. It acts up. Bruins legend to fans. I still don't. S. Hmm. Doesn't look like a name. But these all seem right. Open as a tomb. Unseal? Unseal a tomb? And followers of the largest denomination of Islam. What? Oh, the eclipse. I keep forgetting about the eclipse. You'd think I would have remembered after making such a big point of explaining it. So Sunnis. So we have the sun, the S-U-N, from the eclipse, plus N-I-S for Sunnis. Okay, there we go. Great. One of the Eternals in Marvel Comics. Um, doesn't look like something I recognize just yet. What about this? Top Shelf. Could be oh, A1. And we had uh, Top Shelf Elite. Always enjoy those little echoes. Oops. A1. There we go. Oh, and here's our eclipse. Right. Oh! I com Once again, I completely forgot about the eclipse when I was looking at the catastrophic weather event potentially caused by a meteor crash. So what is that? Um... Tsunami. Yes. T and then S-U-N and then A-M-I. So uh, what kind of tsunami? A mega tsunami? It's sort of terrifying to imagine. Oh, and the fish with the long snout. It's a gar after all. Look at that. And repellent spray. Oh, mace. Right. I was thinking insect repellent, that kind of thing. But this would be to repel a person. Um, pepper spray, right? Is that what mace is, I think? Yes, of course. Certainly. Ah, there we go. Oh, and I think this might complete the puzzle. So let's check. Oh, no, it won't. It won't because I need to get the um, Eternals or whatever it was. Was it Eternal? Yes. Uh, rustic verse, an idyll. So poem describing sort of something idyllic often. Actress Kunis of Family Guy, Mila Kunis. Great. I don't know that I knew she was in that, but I certainly recognize the name. Um, yeah, this all works. So thanks. Bruins legend to fans. Thanes? It's going to have to be a vowel, almost certainly. Or it could, well, I was going to say it could be a Y, S, B, like the um, uh, ESPN awards that I know about through the crossword. Oh, is it is it Thanos? Isn't he the bad guy from other Marvel movies? I thought the Eternals were the new, I thought that was one of those... Maybe I'm mixing up what these are. I'm sure I am. I have not seen very many of these films. Um, so yeah, it, it, it probably is Thanos. I certainly recognize that name. And so Espo, there we go. There it is. Great. That could be, a, I would say that's a bit of a tough cross. Um, if you don't, well, not if you know, <laughs> no, no cross is difficult if you know the answer, but, but if you don't, it's tough to infer. Um, and there we go. Look at that. We've got this nice little solar eclipse animation. Um, so that was a fun, uh, that was a tricky theme. I would say the theme, probably the trickiest part of the puzzle. I, although it wasn't a pushover otherwise. You know, we had some unusual answers like, well, again, Espo Thanos, maybe, maybe pro probably many people watching this, neither of these will be difficult, but uh, they certainly were for me. 
Um, but then things like the Aeolian harp and what else? Oh, we never even looked at this. The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters artist is Goya. So I completely, I didn't see this. Oh, it was part of, it crossed, receives an anesthetic. Yeah, I just missed that entirely. Um, Alfa Romeo could be tough if you don't happen to know that car make. I think Alfa Romeo is maybe sold in the U.S. now, but I think was not for many, many years. They departed the U.S. market for a long time. This Nessendorma would be pretty tough if you don't happen to know that. Um, some of the crosses around the eclipses were a bit easier. Miss Universe, Say Uncle, so maybe Say Uncle has some halfway. Mega Tsunami is very fun. I really like that. Sunnis, Players Union, Goes Under. Very, this is a very clever theme. Dotson. What is funny? What a funny thing. Uh, a very dated automobile reference. I suspect <laughs> just as yesterday, there were many people who had, had never actually seen a floppy disk in the comments referencing the uh, existence of floppy disks in the, in the puzzle yesterday. Um, probably many people have never heard of Dotson. Um, I mean, it really, it's, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm in a way too young for Dotson. I just happen to know because I, I had a friend with an old, you know, very old car. Well, fairly old car, a few decades old. Um, anyway, uh, that's that. That's the puzzle. Uh, could be, have, could have been a very tough one, I would think. If you, if you didn't clock the, um, the theme, I guess it was really, I started to be confused around surrenders, but surrenders is such a generic word that I thought maybe there's just something that I don't, that I don't know. But then this one, the Pacini aria, I just thought this doesn't make any sense. Um, what kind of aria is only going to have a three letter name? So yeah, that I would be curious to know which was the break in clue for you. If you solved this puzzle as well, let me know. I'm very interested to know. And so now, speaking of speaking of that floppy disk uh, bit from yesterday's puzzle, as I said, we did. There were several comments, so I might read some of those because they're just sort of fun. And I don't think there were very many straight corrections of yesterday's puzzle. In fact, yeah, there were no, there were none. There weren't any corrections. So I'll just read some of these <laughs> some of these comments. Archie Georgeson says, "I have never seen a floppy disk in my entire life." And then Bolt Champs thirty seven replied to say. We still use them at work, which is fascinating. I'm very curious to know what current profession still uses floppy disks at work. I assume it's because there's just a computer system that hasn't been updated. I know that sometimes some extra, some systems, government systems or other kinds of systems that really rely on continuity sometimes use very old computer systems, not necessarily because they want to, but just because the complexity and risk of replacing the entire thing wholesale would be either too much, too risky, or too expensive, and it isn't justified in the budget, or at least someone considers it not to be. So that kind of thing does happen. I mean, I think you get programming language, old programming language is used in the same way. And then MK probably sums up a lot of people these days who says, the only thing I know about floppy disks are that they are save icons. I have no idea what would differentiate them from something like a CD or DVD. Um, and I'm about to turn 23 in Canada for reference, so y'all can judge me as appropriate. Uh, so the thing that does differentiate them, if you are interested, is that um, unlike a CD or DVD, they're they're re they're easily rewritable. Um, there are rewritable CDs and DVDs, but they're a particular kind of CD and DVD. And generally speaking, um, whereas any any floppy disk is rewritable by any ordinary floppy drive, and uh, there's a, this is unnecessary knowledge, but there's a little lock on the floppy disk that you can use to indicate whether it should be rewritable or not. But even if it's not there, you can tape over it and rewrite it anyway. Um, anyway, there's a whole lot of floppy disk discussion in the, uh, in the comments. And Edward James has the, has the other interesting observation. The floppy disk being used as a save, save icon is a classic example of a skew morph. S-K-E-U-O-M-O-R-F-P-H. In essence, objects or symbols retaining non-functional designs from their precedents. The notepad icon being an actual notepad, the call icon on our phones resembling an old landline handle are all everyday examples. Uh, yes, very true. I, I, I find it fascinating how um, modern computer user interface uses so many shapes, these skew morphs, these um, symbols that are 
completely outdated in, in, in modern life, just have essentially no relevance whatsoever. It's interesting that we're, we've, we've all sort of trained new generations to internalize these, what are basically uh, obsolete ancient artifacts um, for their symbols, which I guess is how everything works. I mean, everything is just a symbol that comes from nothing. I mean, the, the letters of the alphabet come from somewhere that's arbitrary to us. So it's not as though there's anything strange about that, but it is sort of, it's interesting when you're someone who <laughs> grew up during an era when those things were actually very normal and now and you've seen them become obsolete. Anyway, what else do we have in the comments? Not much. Um, Andrew Yang has the observation, funnily enough, although Prince Fielder was, quote, aptly named, given, his, given he was a, a baseball player referenced in yesterday's puzzle, he was actually not exceptional at fielding. What made him all-star was his terrific power hitting. He was truly a terror on offense during his peak. Good to know. Thank you. Anyway, I suppose that's it for yesterday's clues. So I'll say that's it for today's puzzle as well. I hope you enjoyed it. It was an interesting one. It was very much a Thursday theme, very much a Thursday puzzle. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope um, you either were able to figure it out yourself or were able to draw some some value from my explanation about how these sometimes work. Uh so there we have it. That's it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday puzzle. Might be a tricky one, but it certainly won't be tricky in the way today's was. That's for sure. No theme. So join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.